I have here a book, uh, Ancient Wisdom for Modern Ignorance by Swami B.V. Tripari. And I'm going to read a, a chapter titled Old Age Common Sense for New Age Nonsense, which I just love, of course. And um, I was reading it and I saw so much uh, uh, good information, positive information for, for a lot of people on YouTube who are just buying into this New Age the hook, line, and sinker without questioning any single aspect of it just absorbing 100% of it as the absolute truth, as a new religion. Even though that you say you're against religion, uh, New Age has become a religion. There's, there's no difference between it and a religion. It's got its own fundamentalism, it's got its own everything, except that it's much more shallow than other religions and thinks that it's much higher than other religions and that it's the new age and the new this and the new Aquarian and this and that. reading. By now the term New Age is a part of the vocabulary of practically every American. A consistent definition of the term, however, is not as commonplace. For the most part, New Age, a label given by the media, isn't a specific group. Rather, it is a class of people of diverse interests united by common values. Social critic Marilyn Ferguson, who bestseller The Aquarian Conspiracy has been dubbed the Handbook of the New Age by USA Today, sees a New Age that has its members has as its members those who espouse an underlying holistic philosophy. They attempt to see the interrelationship of problems instead of mechanistically viewing each other each problem separately. They emphasize decentralization of power with the view to promote the development of whole individuals and tend to view things globally by keeping the long-range interests of the planet in mind. Ferguson says many smaller movements and individuals uh, sees many solar movements and individuals as members of the much larger New Age social phenomenon. Although it is often thought of as a movement uh, arising out of a spiritual foundation, many of the major, its major influences have come from humanistic psychology. For example, the human potential movement of the 60s and 70s, epitomized by psychologists like Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow, is largely responsible for laying the foundation of the optimism that pervades New Age thought. The movement's spiritual credentials are questioned by Joseph Jonathan Adolf, senior editor of New Age magazine. In an article written for 1988 Guide to New Age Living, uh, in Guide to New Age Living, Adolf asserts that the claim that spirituality um, underlies the New Age phenomenon has been problematic and quote unquote a source of a source of much confusion regarding the New Age in general. He says the New Age is not a religion, and he questions what is meant by spirituality by many who use the term. <clears throat> However, the latest rising star of the New Age horizon, trance channelers, have difficulty with the aforementioned concept of the New Age. They would like to deify the New Age. Although the more down-to-earth humanistic New, Ad New Age advocates recognize, that, uh, recognize the quote-unquote new spiritualists to be members of the New Age family, more and more uh, they are seeking to disassociate themselves from them giving them a place on the fringe. Much to the embarrassment of long-standing members, the, the media recently has given more atten attention to this fringe quote-unquote element than it has to the entire New Age movement in the last decade. Recently, Time Magazine de dedicated its cover story to the New Age startling, uh, starring Shirley MacLaine. The thrust of the article dealt with the latest booming industries within the New Age channeling in crystals, surrounded by an aura of wisdom from the quote-unquote old age, which, ironically, New Agers say has gone by. Many, ha uh, many may have thought it unfair that for a time to characterize the entire New Age movement as a paranormal, quasi-spiritual good way to make a fast buck, but the fact is that millions of people are becoming enamored by the prospect of quick-fix cosmic cures to the problems facing humanity and, the other, uh, and others are cashing in on it. What attracts people to the not-so-new spirituality is difficult to say. Channeling, for example, has been around since time immemorial. It, is generally, uh, it has generally appealed to the undereducated sections of society, and it is prominent in many third-world countries. In Brazil, it is known as Macumba, and although most of the century is officially Catholic, unofficially Macumba is practically the national religion. 
While the poorer sections are open about it, the, ar the aristocratic class is equally involved behind closed doors. Haiti and many African nations are also heavily influenced by a kind of spiritualism involving channeling, and one would be hard-pressed to find a culture where its influence was, ab was altogether absent. Channeling was spoken of by the Greek philosophers Plato, Aristotle, and Socrates. Some say that those channeled insights had much to do with the shaping of the basic principles of Western law. President Lincoln invited the famous medium Andrew, Davis, Andrew Jackson Davis to the White House, and his channeled information inspired Lincoln to sign uh, the Emancip Emancipation Proclamation. Channelers tell us that the popularity of channeling in America is due to the fertile combination of breakthrough information and people now ready for enlightenment, people whose time has come. Leaving aside the American way of marketing as another po possibility of channeling's popularity, it is true that the kind of information that New Age people receive from channeled entities is different from the information sought after and received in many third world countries. Global prophecies, stock market predictions, and technological insights, for example, have replaced information about finding lost loves, catching unfaithful partners, um, and speaking with deceased relatives. Moreover, the new information is about a spiritual time to come and a new spirituality, a new age. Just how accurate the new information is, however, is subject to suspicion especially when it contradicts many of the spiritual truths held over the centuries by persons of exemplary character. Several popular channeled entities have labeled the traditional transcendentalists who have walked among us as members of the quote-unquote old spiritual age. Although it is commonly understood that actions speak louder than words, these disembodied New Age leaders, while speaking at considerable length, remain in such a state that their actions cannot be observed. In fact, the channelers themselves generally insist that they cannot be held accountable for their own actions. The quote-unquote old spiritual age, however, has already spoken of channeling and the method by which the, physical uh, the physically embodied can approach the disembodied, as well as what kind of results such communication can, ex uh, can be expected to produce. Throughout revealed scripture in every major religious tradition, channeling is referred to. The Old Testament considers channelers to be bad company. Quote unquote, Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, meaning to Moloch, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritualist, or consults the dead. Deuteronomy 18-10-11. So it's it's equating New Age channelers with the the demoniac worshippers of Moloch. BG 9-25. From this sampling, uh, we uh, those who would uh, in the Bhagavad Gita we find those who would worship the demigods take birth among the demigods. Those who worship the ancestors go to the ancestors. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. And those who worship me will live with me, Krishna says. BG 9-25 From this sampling of verses, it would appear in the opinion of the old spiritual age, channeling is somewhat less than divine. Of course, channeling as it is known today is not to be confused with the inspired side of a saint, of a saint through which revealed scripture is manifested, the willingness of God to move the pen of humanity depends on humanity's utter willingness to serve the will of God, devoid of any tinge of self-interest. The pens of the apostles of Christ, the inspired writings of Vyasadeva, the author of the Vedas, and Muhammad's Quran have left the world with timeless wisdom. Their inspired followers exemplify a, whole de a wholesale dedication to the inspired word and its singular author whose message appears in various forms in accordance with time and circumstances. Possessed of that spirit, saints are capable of shedding new light on the revealed truth. New light, not in the sense of uh, throwing out the words that have come before, but merely a shining a brighter light on the same words. See, these, these inspired teachers, Muhammad, Jesus, 
etc. Um, Lord Chaitanya, they didn't throw out the old uh, religion and say, oh, you guys are members of the old age, blah, 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 now you need to forget all of that, it's all invalid, blah, 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 listen to me only. No, rather, these people came and they, they, they gave you the synthetic truth, the highest synthesized truth, which was appropriate to that age. And they always built on the previous scriptures. They always lauded the previous scriptures. They always held them up. So, to, to, to just say, oh, you guys are all mistaken. This is the old age. Listen to me as I give you a new truth. Is, is just complete ridiculousness. Continuing. Saints, uh, saints, saints are capable of shedding new light on revealed truth, new light in the sense of throwing out, not in the sense of throwing out the words which have come before, but merely shining a brighter light on those same words. By the sun's light, the rose comes into bloom. That however is a far cry from repra replacing a rose with a dandelion as the channelers have attempted to do. Bazing. According to the Vedas, the mental world is the background of the physical realm. It is, a, it is like a vast body of water, and the physical world can be compared to ice. Ice is a temporary transformation of water under certain conditions. The mental plane is far more accommodating than the physical. For example, if we look around the room we're in, we see so many objects. But how many of them can we, phys can we physically carry? In the mind, however, we can carry everything in the room with us wherever we go. It is said that uh, work is done in the mind. It is only later carried out through the senses. The mind is more subtle than the body, but more powerful. The mental work, however, is not the divine world. God knows what evil lurks in the minds of men. This is the point that I've been trying to make with, with my um, the video that I talked about, about uh, astral projection. You're projecting into the mental plane, the astral plane, mental plane. So it's not a spiritual plane. It's a relative plane. And you will not get any spiritual bonus out of it. No spiritual effect whatsoever. Above the mind is intelligence, the power of discrimination. Although with the help of mind I may determine that something is pleasing, with the help of intelligence I may determine that it may re uh, not really be good for me. The height of the intellectual inter exercise is to discriminate from spirit and matter. That may give us a glimpse of the soul. The intellect may lead us to the soul, but its capacity to guide is limited. Intellect is but a servant of the soul, and the soul is a servant of God. What kind of information can we get from this mental world? The only thing we can be sure of is it will not be 100% accurate most of the time. It is certainly not absolute. Channeled new information is never absolute, it's always uh, relative and mental. There are many types of inhabitants in the mental realms, ranging from the benevolent to the demoniac, from progressive to regressive. It stands to reason that, these kind, that the kind of entities that are most easy to get in touch with are those who are themselves attached to the physical plane. These would be entities who were possessed of physical material desires, yet whose karma would not allow them to acquire a physical form. For example, suicide is said to produce the karmic reaction of having to take birth in the mental world where there are no physical bodies. These entities remain, however, in ethereal form, seeking opportunities to possess a body through which they can satisfy their desires. Similarly, those who do the work of channeling the quote-unquote gifted were more likely living in the mental world in their last life. Theirs is a kind of death in the mental world. Interesting. Thus, their consciousness is still attached to that plane, and thus don't follow them. I'm so glad that, that Swami Trivari has written this, and that uh, you're here watching this video. Please send this video to your New Age friends. Um, try to wake them up. Because this is very dangerous stuff. All throughout history in the West, we've known this shit to be bad, associated with demon, uh, you know, demoniac uh, invocations and, and, and evil shit. Not, not the true religion of God. It's been always associated with the fringe sorcerer, conjurer types who don't know what the fuck they're doing. Who are always being, you know, bewitched and, and, and confuddled and bamboozled. 
by the prophets and saints and, and gurus of God. These people are always being scorned. They're always being tossed out of, of places by, by the, the saintly. There's so many instances of a sorcerer or a channeler or a magician being kicked out or, or murdered or killed because he was evil. <laughs> Misleading the people. Misleading himself. And opening the doorway for evil shit to enter into the world. Continuing. Those who are not grossly material atta materially attached, but still derive pleasure from having their views heard and ap uh, appreciated s solely for the sake of their own aggrandizement, are subtly materially attached. Philosophers and thinkers, speculators and the like who live in the mental plane can easily acquire a large audience there. Their views are no more profound than, the thought, than that of many thoughtful persons from this plane, although they generally have more knowledge of the physical world. Thus most spirits can capture our attention by telling us about our past and something in the future. In exchange for the satisfaction these spirits derive from our listening to them and taking their advice, those of an altruistic disposition often give practical help in many areas, in the fields of medicine, invention, science, investment, or in just helping one to feel good about oneself. There is plenty of documented evidence that the disembodied can be helpful. Edgar Cayce consistently provided accurate medical data, although he knew little or nothing about the medicine in his waking state. Lazarus of Concept Synergy currently gives a pretty good sermon about PMA, positive mental attitude, but that's as far as it goes. Beyond that, many spirit guides get in over their auras. Many spirit guides get in over their auras, especially when they contradict genuine spiritual traditions, which have produced numerous saints on the earth. An example of such contradiction is found in the popularized theme of channel of channeled guides. Uh, in, in a popular theme of channel guides, westernized reincarnation. According to some new trans channelers, we can only progress. There is no question of falling back into a lower life form. But in the literature of ancient India, where the process of reincarnation was originally described, does not lend itself to such interpretation. The idea that we can only progress does not even match with our experience or common sense. If a man is given a high and responsible position with privileges and fa facilities and misuses them, as did say Richard Nixon, he will be hurled down and impeached. Therefore, we must seriously consider that today's popular channel entities are not divine but rather mental or astral, and thus cannot bring their audiences to the highest destination sought by genuine spiritual seekers since the beginning of recorded history. If the more humanistic section of New Agers are embarrassed by the many who have attempted to make uh, divinity out of the paranormal, they have no one to blame but themselves. Humanism, after all, is nothing but the speculative attempt to equate humanity with divinity. Let me say that again. Humanism is nothing more than the speculative uh, attempt to equate humanity with divinity and a man-made God is no God at all. Such a heretical idea of spirituality can never satisfy the souls of humanity. Such a heretical idea. We should call a spade a spade, especially in this instance. Otherwise, we, became, we become subject to, the, to a potential contempt of the Supreme. This, in turn, may threaten our chances of ever achieving the harmonious life which, regardless of how, many, uh, how much we herald its arrival, still continues to elude us. So true. Why does it still continue to elude you, New Agers and Channelers? Why isn't the New Age fucking come? I can't wait until December 2012 so we can all get over this crap. In the words of Plutarch, it's better to have no opinion about God than uh, at all than one such as is unworthy of Him. For the one is only unbelief. The other is contempt. In the words of Plutarch, it is better to have no opinion about God at all than such as one is unworthy of Him. For the one is only unbelief and the other is contempt. 
The license to speculate can be dangerous, just as in mechanistic science there are certain axiomatic truths, so also in non-mechanistic science or spiritual science there are fundamental axiomatic truths, for example, that the soul lies beyond the limited conceptions of race, sex, nationality, and so on is an axiomatic truth. We are moved to question, therefore, when our own cultural, sexual, society, soci social orientation gets the upper hand in shaping our quote-unquote spirituality. Do we have liberty to create new spiritual axioms in the name of enlightened thinking until our behavior is at least in accordance with the saints who have come before us in traditional religion? A grain of caution may be wise. Everyone has the inalienable right to pursue enlightenment at their own pace and of their own volition, necessarily. And there's tremendous scope for new revelation even within God-given traditional religious systems. From Shankara to Ramanuja to Madhava to Sri Chaitanya, from the Old Testament to the New, there are many examples of this. We must look not to replace the law, but to fulfill it. Too often speculative theories regarding the nature of spirituality expose themselves as uninformed opinions when they blame shortcomings, quote-unquote, in the old age of spirituality for their necessity to redefine divinity. In the words of Bernadette Roberts, author, author, uh, author of The Experience of No Self, the inclusiveness of the traditional past is well attested to by the contemplatives who never went outside of their religion to see the divine and all that exists, or all that exists as a manifestation of the divine. To overlook this fact is indicative of an out-of-hand rejection of, or tradi of traditional religion by those who have obviously never lived it. It's so true. It's so true. That some people chose, uh, choose not to go the traditional route is their prerogative, but to blame their choice in a deficit in traditional religion is contrary to the fact and totally absurd. And I would add, it's just childish. That's all it really is, it's just childishness. Our conjecture about the nature of Godhead must arise only out of a strong foundation, one which has been laid down by saints and scriptures in previous times. Enlightened thinking requires that we are careful not to throw out the baby with the bathwater. If we are truly interested in light and thinking, the planet is rich with examples from every religious tradition uh, from which to draw inspiration. Is it in light and thinking to feel it is beneath our dignity to follow great thinkers who have gone before us, greater thinkers? Do not the greater thinkers themselves advocate that we also think for ourselves? When so many saints have already come before us and leading the way, perhaps it is only our lack of courage and utter attachment to this earthly plane that has forced us to come up with quote-unquote new ideas about spiritual life, which may amount to no more than self-deception and relative improvements of character. No one can deny the noble character of Christ or the idea that a society of Christ-like men and women would undoubtedly be a new age. But very, very few are courageous enough to follow such an example. Very few are thoroughly convinced of the dire necessity for a truly new age. Genuine spirituality remains above the mental and intellectual conjectures of much of the New Age speculation as something not to be known except by those who follow the guidelines by which God allows himself to be known. This is not a discrimination on his part, but an invitation on his terms. Although those terms may appear to be restricting for the neophyte, it is not the self that they seek to restrict, but the demands of the material coverings of the soul in the form of the body and mind for which we maintain a deep affection. If we love our vehicle so much that we let it take us in the wrong direction, we may end up in a fool's paradise. But if we steer our vehicle in the right direction, pointed by genuine saints past and present, then we can actually achieve the divine consciousness that trans channelers and humanists fall short of producing in their followers. If there is indeed a new age upon us, it is found in those calling for the visions of the enlightened to descend within us. It is a group that sees the frailty of humanity and seeks communication with the divine, or communion, sorry. It is the finite drawing of sympathy of the infinite. It is a new generation wholeheartedly following the general, genuine spiritual traditions of the past and finding new inspiration in doing so. It is admittedly a time for the most part yet to come, but a time which will be truly worthy of the title New Age. Uh, it is admittedly a time for the most part yet to come, but a time which will truly be worthy of the title New Age.
optimism that pervades New Age thought. The movement's spiritual credentials are questioned by Joseph Jonathan Adolf, senior editor of New Age magazine. In an article written for 1988 Guide to New Age Living, uh, in Guide to New Age Living, Adolf asserts that the claim that spirituality um, underlies the New Age phenomenon has been problematic and quote unquote a source of a source of much confusion regarding the New Age in general. He says the New Age is not a religion, and he questions what is meant by spirituality by many who use the term. <clears throat> However, the latest rising star of the New Age horizon, trance channelers, have difficulty with the aforementioned concept of the New Age. They would like to deify the New Age philosophy. They attempt to see the interrelationship of problems instead of mechanistically viewing each other each problem separately. They emphasize decentralization of power with the view to promote the development of whole individuals and tend to view things globally by keeping the long-range interests of the planet in mind. Ferguson says many smaller movements and individuals uh, sees many smaller movements and individuals as members of the much larger New Age social phenomenon. Although it is often thought of as a movement uh, arising out of a spiritual foundation, many of the major, its major influences have come from humanistic psychology. For example, the human potential movement of the 60s and 70s, epitomized by psychologists like Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow, is largely responsible for laying the foundation of the age. Although the more down-to-earth humanistic New Age, New Age advocates recognize, that, uh, recognize the quote-unquote new spiritualists to be members of the New Age family, more and more uh, they are seeking to disassociate themselves from them, giving them a place on the fringe. Much to the embarrassment of long-standing members, the, the media recently has given more atten attention to this fringe quote-unquote element than it has to the entire New Age movement in the last decade. Recently, Time Magazine de dedicated its cover story to the New Age startling, uh, starring Shirley MacLaine. The thrust of the article dealt with the latest booming industries within the New Age. Channeling and crystals in a religion. It's got its own fundamentalism. It's got its own everything except that it's much more shallow than other religions and thinks that it's much higher than other religions and that it's the new age and the new this and the new Aquarian and this and that. Reading. By now the term new age is a part of the vocabulary of practically every American. A consistent definition of the term, however, is not as commonplace. For the most part, New Age, a label given by the media, isn't a specific group, rather it is a class of people of diverse interests united by common values. Social critic Marilyn Ferguson, who bestseller The Aquarian Conspiracy has been dubbed the Handbook of the New Age by USA Today, sees a New Age that has its members, has as its members those who espouse an underlying holistic I have here a book, uh, Ancient Wisdom for Modern Ignorance by Swami B.V. Tripari, and I'm going to read a, a chapter titled Old Age Common Sense for New Age Nonsense, which I just love, of course, and um, I was reading it and I saw so much uh, uh, good information, positive information for, for a lot of people on YouTube who are just buying into this New Age the hook, line, and sinker without questioning any single aspect of it, just absorbing 100% of it as an absolute truth, as a new religion. Even though that you say you're against religion, uh, New Age has become a religion. There's, there's no difference between 